There are over 200 AWS services out there, but don't get scared. Nobody is expected to know them all. However, once in a while, you may feel compelled to learn a new service. This may be for a new project you're working on, or maybe you just want to broaden your skill set and learn something new. But it can be hard to learn a new AWS service from scratch and also save yourself from a surprise bill while you're at it. And as a YouTuber and a blog writer, this is something that I personally struggle with all the time. I'm constantly needing to learn about new topics, learn about new concepts or services so that I can make great content for you folks and share some of this knowledge with the world. And to make things easier, I've come up with kind of a formula or a recipe that I follow when trying to approach learning a new service just to help me speed things along and streamline the entire process. And today I want to pay it forward and share with you five tips that I've come up with when learning a new AWS service. So let's get into it. So this first one may seem super obvious and it is, but you'd be surprised how many folks just run in headfirst into the AWS console and start clicking around and easily get overwhelmed and end up quitting and not even learning about the service in the first place. So my first tip for you is very simply to understand the domain of the service in which you're learning. So for example, are you learning about a NoSQL database? Are you learning about a caching framework? Are you learning about a monitoring tool or a security concept? It's important to know what the general general theme is of the new service. And for some of you, you may already have a great understanding of this domain, but for others, it may kind of require you to do a little bit of additional research totally outside of AWS. For example, if you know nothing about caching and you're trying to learn Memcache or Redis, you probably need to do a little bit of research to understand what those products are, what caching is and why it's important before you get into the AWS console and start trying to create a Memcache cluster. This shouldn't take you very much time at all, but it's important not to skip this step. So once you understand the domain in which the service operates, your next step is to watch or read some high level documentation or some high level videos. And what I personally like to do is on the AWS service homepages, there's typically some very short and high quality videos that AWS produces, just giving you a very high overview of what the service is all about. These are usually like two to three minutes long. I haven't seen one more than five minutes and they're high production value as well. And what these do, at least for me, is give some high level context and what are the core ideas here? What are the core concepts that you're working with? So just get some general understanding of what this service is going to be doing. Now, if you wanna go a step further, and I like to do this as well before I move on to the next step, is I like to go to the AWS documentation and almost every AWS service that I've come across has a core concept section. And the core concepts section basically introduces you to what are the main building blocks of the service that you're going to be working with. So for something like, let's say SNS, for example, or simple notification service, some of the core concepts are SNS topics or SNS subscriptions or publishing. These are things that kind of are the building blocks and foundational that you should probably know about when you're working with the service. And I think it's a good idea to understand what these things are before heading into the console and playing with it. So once you've watched a video or two and you understand the core concepts of the service, that brings me to my third tip. And the third one should definitely not be avoided, and that is to understand the pricing model of the service. So if you have a new AWS account, a lot of AWS services qualify for the free tier. And some other AWS services have offerings such as always free. And for the services that qualify, this allows you to experiment with them and play with them without having to incur any additional costs. But for a lot of other services, you don't have that luxury. So you may have to pay for using some of these services, unfortunately. I wish everything was free, but that's just not how it works. So before getting into the AWS console and playing with things, you really should have an understanding of how the pricing model works for the service that you're playing with. And specifically what I mean by this is how is it built? Is it built by hourly? Are you built by just creating a certain infrastructure component or a certain entity in the service? All these services operate differently, but there are some general themes. And once you get the hang of it, it's kind of easy to anticipate how a service is going to be built. But if not, you can be easily walking into a trap where if you select a particular setting in the AWS console, uh, you may be paying a lot more than you would expect. So I've seen way too many people fall into this trap and just have a surprise bill at the end of the month and it's not a good feeling to have to pay for something you didn't really mean to use in the first place so spend some time go to the aws homepage for the service that you're looking into and just read a little bit about how the service is built this shouldn't take you very long it's something that can save your pocketbook in the future 
You'll thank me later. All right, so after you understand the billing model, the next step is to actually start getting your hands dirty. It's time to go into the console and start clicking around and playing with these things. And I can't stress this enough. A lot of people like to say, oh, go ahead and start with using infrastructure as code or something like CDK or Terraform to learn a new service. I do not agree with this at all. Personally, I'm a visual learner, so I like seeing things and kind of having a tactile feel out of what I'm building. A lot of people like to do this through code and that's totally fine. But if you're like me and you like to see things as you build them, then getting your hands dirty in the console is something that you should definitely spend a lot of time with. So this can involve just setting up that new piece of infrastructure or maybe if you're working with something like DynamoDB, you know, setting up a table, looking at how the monitoring works, inserting some items into the table, creating some indexes, just get your hands dirty with how the service operates. Now there's a lot of great tutorials out there that you can watch as well and follow. Now in addition to just experimenting in the console aimlessly and clicking around and trying things out, you may want to follow a more structured tutorial that walks you through all the steps in the console. I know at least on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of these types of videos where I kind of show you every step along the way to solve a particular problem using a particular service. And this is something that I think you can learn a lot from by someone that that's more experienced from you, walking you through what all the settings mean and showing you how to navigate and operate the service. I can't stress this point enough. I really think that you should spend a lot of time in the AWS console just playing with things and understanding how they work. This step is kind of variable in terms of how long it takes. It really does depend on the service, but definitely earmark a couple hours, if not more, to experiment in the console. So once you're familiar with how this new service works, then you could start looking into things like infrastructure as code. So CDK, CloudFormation, and Terraform are probably the most popular choices, at least right now. I have a bunch of videos on the differences between these things, especially CDK and CloudFormation that you can check out. But infrastructure as code is kind of how everyone deploys their infrastructure these days. People don't go into the console and click, click, click in an actual production scenario. Or if you are, you probably shouldn't and should be using infrastructure as code. So at this point, you have a good understanding of what the service does, what it is, how it works. And now you're ready to play around with your infrastructure as code solution to figure out how do I actually deploy this thing out in the real world now. And if the time comes that you really need to use this service for some kind of real use case, you'll be more than ready to do so using infrastructure as code. So some of those tips may have been obvious, but this is kind of like the mental framework or the steps that I go through when I'm trying to learn a new service. I hope this was helpful for some of you that are struggling with this. If you like the video, leave a comment down below and please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.